In this video, I'll be continuing to teach you about MongoDB and Python by covering advanced queries and full text search. I'll be showing you how to search documents using fuzzy matching and synonyms, how you can autocomplete search queries, how to perform compound queries, and how to find documents ranked by their relevance. This video is the final video in my MongoDB with Python series, and you can check out the previous two videos from the link in the description. Lastly, if you haven't already, you can claim $25 in free MongoDB Atlas credits by clicking the link in the description and using the code MKTTIM. I'd also like to thank MongoDB for sponsoring this video and providing you all with this discount code. And with that said, let's go ahead and learn about full text search. So to begin here, I want to give you a brief on what full text search is. So full text search refers to searching some text inside of extensive text data that's stored electronically and returning results that contain some or all of the words from the search query. So full text search is different from searches based on metadata or on pieces of the original text, like titles, regions, etc. since the full text search engine is examining all of the words in every single stored document. So wherever you have a collection of documents or even just a single document, and you want to search through all of the text in those documents for some keywords, you can use full text search. So the obvious example here is something like the internet that contains a high volume of text that's stored in some type of documents. And when we're looking for something, say by using Google, we're looking for a specific word or words or some related topic to our query. Now, when we get our results back, we want relevancy rankings on how well the piece of content matched our query. And this can be very basic from an exact match to something like fuzzy matching where the words don't quite match, but they are equivalent. So the internet is just one large example of this, but many types of websites and applications need efficient and fully featured full text search. So as you can imagine, there's a good demand for people who know, understand, and want to work in this area. And usually they are called search engineers. Now, a search engineer has two primary responsibilities, and those are to develop and program search engines and to optimize web content to achieve the best possible rankings in search results. So obviously what comes to mind here is working for Google as a search engineer, but there are like 20 people doing this job and it's likely that you need a PhD to actually work at Google and do this. However, there are a lot of other available options. It's kind of an undiscovered gold mine in terms of engineering and starting salaries for this position, at least according to Glassdoor, are $125,000 and up. So this is kind of a fascinating area and there's a lot of opportunity. And so I thought I'd show you some full text search concepts in action using non-relational data via MongoDB's full text search implementation. So now that we have an idea of what full text search is, let's drop into a cluster with some sample data and I'll show you how you can perform full text search on a MongoDB database. All right, so I'm here in MongoDB Atlas. I've already set up a collection and a database. I have some sample data in here. I'm just going to show it to you and then we'll start looking at full text search on this data. So here I have a bunch of Jeopardy questions. I have about 156,000 of them. The full data set I'm using has over 200,000. I just haven't inserted all of them into the collection. Anyways, for every single question, we have a category, an air date, the actual question, a value, the answer to the question, the round, and then a show number. And you can imagine that this would make decent data for us to be able to search through if we're looking for a specific question, if we're looking for a question associated with an answer, if maybe we want to find all of the questions questions in a specific round. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that we can kind of search through this data with. So it'll make a good example for this video. Now, if you want to uh, mess around with this data yourself, I'll leave a link to where you can download the data set from the description. All I've done is downloaded the JSON file and then I've loaded the JSON file into my Python script and just inserted all of the documents into MongoDB. If you're unfamiliar with how to do that, then please check out the first two videos in this series. Again, this will be linked in the description. So now that we have a basic idea of what the data looks like, I'm going to go here in VS Code and we'll start writing some stuff that we can use for full text search. So as you can see here, my basic setup is done. I've already connected to my cluster, connected to my Jeopardy database, and then my question collection. So the first thing we're going to have a look at here is how we perform fuzzy matching and then how we use synonyms uh, when we're actually searching for stuff inside of our text. So what I mean by that is if we search for something, say, like beer, maybe we're going to have pint be a synonym of beer. And that way, if we see either of those words, then we'll return them as if they were equivalent. Right. I'm sure you guys know what synonyms are. I don't really need to explain that, but I'll show you how we perform that using MongoDB search. 
So the first thing we actually need to do here is go back to our cluster and we need to create something known as a search index. Now, if you're unfamiliar with indexes, essentially what this is, is a special data structure that holds the data of a few fields in our documents on which the index is created. Now, what this allows us to do is search through the index, which is containing less data than the entire collection itself. So we can speed up our searching operations on our database. I'll put up the official definition of an index on the screen so you can read through it. But that's the basic idea is that by creating an index, we're storing less data that we need to search through. And then the index will kind of point us to the original documents and it just speeds up our search operations. So I'm going to go here to search indexes and I'm going to create an index on my collection. Now, if you're following along with this, you'll need to do this on your collection as well. If you want to do the fuzzy matching and the synonym search. So we're going to click on create search index here. Now there's the option to use a JSON editor where you can just type all of this in uh, like kind of raw. You don't have a, a visual editor. But we're going to use the visual editor for right now. OK, so let's go into the visual editor uh, for our search index. We can call this whatever we want, but I'm just going to call this my language search because we want to create a search index here that's going to allow us to search for text, specifically English text. Now, in terms of the collection, we're going to select this one right here, the question collection on our Jeopardy database. OK, so let's go next here. Uh, so now we need to kind of mess around with a few of these parameters. So we need to click on refine your index here. We need to modify some of these parameters, specifically the index analyzer and the search analyzer. So for this, we're going to sele select lucene.language and then English. It should change both of them for us. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing this. I'm not sure exactly how you say that. Now, what these are is essentially our full text search engine. So this is what's actually going to perform the search for us when we make a search query. Uh, and what this will do is essentially ignore insignificant words for us and provide some context to our text. So when we do this full text search, uh, it's just going to actually allow this to work properly. And again, ignore those insignificant words and do some other more advanced stuff that I won't get into here. So there's a few other options as well. Since we know we only have English text here, I'm selecting English. But if you add a specific language, right, you could select that in here. Now, there's a few other things you could do. I'm not going to get into it in this video. Uh, for now, this is all we need for our search index. So we can leave the rest the same and uh, simply click on save changes here and then create our search index. Now, this is going to take a second to complete. Once it's done, we can actually start using this language search. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that from code. All right, so our index is now done and I'm going to go back to the code here and we're just going to write a very simple query that's going to give us all of the text that matches uh, with a specific search query. We're going to use something called fuzzy matching. Uh, but for now, let me just write this function. So I'm going to say define uh, fuzzy underscore matching like that. And inside of here, we're going to write our query. So I'm going to say result is equal to and then this is going to be question and that not dot fuzzy, but dot aggregate. And inside of here, we're going to put a list with our different operations. So the operation that we're going to be using here for pretty much the entire video is search. This is how you perform the full text search. And for search, we need to provide the index that we're going to be using. So we're going to say index and then we're going to paste in whatever we called our index, which in this case was the search uh, or the language search. Sorry, probably should have called that language index, but that's fine. Then we're going to provide a keyword here called text and inside of text, we pass a query. This is what we want to search for. So for the query for now, let's go with something simple like computer. We then want to have a path. Now, the path is going to be the field that we want to search on. So I want to search. Uh, on the category here and see if we can find something that has a category similar to computer. And then lastly here, we're going to pass fuzzy. And I'm just going to pass an empty object here. Now, what fuzzy says is that we want to look for something that's similar to computer, but not exactly the same. Really, what that means is that I can do something like add an extra R here. I can misspell this slightly. Uh, I can, you know, do something like compute and this will still give me results for computer because we're doing fuzzy matching. So this is similar to how Google would work, right? When you spell something incorrectly or maybe you have like kind of a grammatical error, but it still gives you the correct results back. Now, I'm not exactly sure um, how off you can be in terms of the query. I know in the MongoDB documentation, it does state that. Uh, but I know with using the fuzzy uh, search here, you can actually manually pass in some parameters on how fuzzy you want it to be. So how off you want to allow allow it to be. Sorry. Uh, but for now, we're just leaving this empty because I just want to use the default parameters. 
So hopefully that makes a bit of sense again, just performing a fuzzy search. So something kind of similar to computer in the category field. So we want to print this out. So let's use our pretty printer. So printer dot uh, P print like that. And we'll just print out the list of result. Uh, and let's see what we get here when we call fuzzy matching. So let's call this. Let's run our code and let's see what we get. All right. So we've just got a ton of results here from the fuzzy match. And you're going to notice a bunch of them are not actually that similar to computer based on how fuzzy matching works by default. So there's actually a bunch of kind of variations that's going to search for and it's going to allow letters to be in kind of the wrong place. Uh, and I haven't messed with any of the, the settings, right? I've just passed in kind of the default object here. And that's why you see when we have a look at category, we're getting st stuff like take a comp day, right? So comp close enough to computer, hence why that's being returned. Uh, if we scroll up a little bit, we have completes the play title. The reason we are getting this is because completes is close enough to computer, uh, right? That, that's why we're getting that. And then if we were to continue here, you'd see kind of all of the other categories that match like campus. This is close enough to computer with the default fuzzy matching settings. Now we can change them. I'm not going to do that. You can have a look on your own on how to do that. But if we want to get a more exact search, we can remove this fuzzy parameter here and run the code again. And now when we do this, we should only get results that actually contain computer. So it doesn't have to be the last word. It could be one of the first words too. like we have computer literacy here, but we're searching exactly for a computer. Whereas when we add in fuzzy, we're doing kind of that fuzzy match. So that is the first thing that I wanted to show you how you perform search for specific text as well as fuzzy matching. Now what I want to show you is how we look for synonyms. So how do we look for something that's maybe similar to computer like a laptop or tech while we're searching? for the query computer. Now to do this, we need to implement a synonyms collection and kind of combine that with our search index. So we're going to go back to MongoDB Atlas and do that. All right, so I'm back on MongoDB Atlas. I've gone to collections here. And the first thing I need to do to implement this synonym search is create a collection that contains the different synonyms. So it doesn't actually give them to you by default. You do need to add your own synonyms, although you could bring in like a pre-built database if you want. However, I'm just going to make a collection here. Let's call this synonyms uh, and let's click on create. Now inside of here, we're, I'm just going to provide one document that contains some synonyms, but you would put your documents in kind of the following format that I'm about to show you. So I'm just going to copy this in uh, and then I will discuss kind of how this works. All right, so let's go to insert document here. I'm going to go to the actual object view and I'm just going to paste this in where we have a mapping type, which is equal to equivalent. And then we have synonyms and these are going to be the synonyms that are equivalent to each other. So for now, I've just had a basic one like beer and pint. We could change this and do something like computer and laptop uh, if I could type laptop properly here. And maybe we just throw in tech while we're at it uh, just so that we have a few that are that are similar. So this is a way that you create a kind of synonym. Uh, what would you call this document? Now I'm just going to bring up the documentation on exactly how you do this. And you can see that we have the mapping type equivalent as one valid option, but we also have the mapping type of explicit. So the first type we have here is equivalent, which is the one that I'm using. And what this means is that all three of these terms are equivalent to each other. So if I search for vehicle, it will return car and automobile. If I search for automobile, it will return anything with vehicle and car. They're all equivalent. However, if I explicitly map something, I need to pass another field here called input. And now what I'm saying is I'm mapping this input to all three of these terms, but not the other way around. So that means if I search for something like pint, only stuff that contains pint is going to be returned. It's not a synonym of brew and beer. It's only that beer maps to these three terms. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. You can read through this explanation. It probably explains it better than I just did. And I'll leave this in the description. Anyways, for now, we're going to go with the mapping type of equivalent. I'm just going to insert this in uh, to our document here into our collection. And now that we've done this, we actually need to add the synonyms collection to our search index. So we're going to go back to search index here uh, and this needs to be on. So I had the wrong selection here the language search. And what we're going to do is go to edit index definition. And this time we're actually going to use the JSON editor because the add synonyms, at least right now when I'm filming this video, it's not supported in the visual editor. 
So I need to add a field here. This field is going to be called synonyms. I think I spelled that correctly. This is going to be a list and we need to pass these objects here, which are going to define the collections that contain our synonyms. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give a name. This name will just be, I'll say mapping for right now. If I could spell mapping correctly, that was atrocious. OK, uh, now that we have mapping, I'm going to pass a source. The source is going to be the collection that contains our synonyms. So actually, this will be an object. And inside of here, we're going to say collection. And then we're just going to pass our collection, which is called synonyms, which is in the same database as this. So we don't need to explicitly reference it. And then after this, I need to pass an analyzer for our synonyms. And this is going to be the Lucene dot and then English like we've used before. So let's spell English correctly. OK, let me just make sure that looks good. I think we are all right. So we have name, we have our source, we have our collection, we have our analyzer and now we can save. OK, so we've now added synonyms to this index. I don't think I need to do anything else. I think that's saved and we are all good. And now that we have the synonyms here, we can actually start searching using them. So to do that, let's go back to our code uh, and let's write the kind of synonym search. All right. So to do this is actually fairly easy. All we're going to do is add one parameter here. And I really should have made another function, but that's fine. We'll do it inside of fuzzy matching. Uh, and this is going to be called synonyms. Of course, I spelled that incorrectly. So just spell it right for me. Thank you very much. And for this, we're just going to pass the name of the synonyms that we added. So if I go back here, sorry, to our search index, and we have a look here and we go to edit with JSON editor. Notice that for my synonyms here inside of synonyms, I called this one mapping. So since I called that mapping, this is the one I want to access from my code. And so I'm referencing mapping here for the synonyms field. All right. So now that we've done that, it should actually return to us anything that contains a computer or is a synonym of computer in the category field. So let's run this and let's see if we do actually end up getting that. OK, so it gave me a ton of results here and notice that we're getting tech, right? Uh, we're getting tech again. Let's scroll up a bit and find some other ones. We're getting computers. OK, uh, computer characters. Let's see if there's any laptop stuff. We get computer geniuses. Uh, OK, we get techno. So all this stuff is, uh, you know, a synonym of computer, as I stated, not much more for me to explain. All right. So with that said, I have now shown you how we do fuzzy searching or fuzzy matching, how we search with synonyms and how we do just a regular text search on a specific field. In this case, we've been using category. Now that we've done that, I want to show you something known as autocomplete. So how we actually do a search that's going to give us autocomplete results. So I'm sure you're all familiar with autocomplete, but this is very similar to when you're kind of typing in like a Google search result uh, or you're searching some website or something like that. And as you're typing, you kind of get results being filled in based on their relevancy. That's what we want to do here. So we want to find all of the things that could be auto completed from what you're typing and return those. So let's make a new function here. Let's call this auto complete uh, and inside of here. We'll start writing what we need. Now, the first thing we actually have to do here is we have to go back to MongoDB Atlas and I just need to remove the synonyms from this uh, because they're not supported with the visual editor and we're going to be using the visual editor to help us with the autocomplete. So let me remove synonyms. Let's save that. Let's go here to the visual editor. And what we need to do is add a field mapping here uh, with something that is autocomplete so that I can actually use the autocomplete feature. So let's make this full screen. I'm going to say add field here. And for the field name, I need to select the one that I want to have autocomplete for. So I'm actually going to go with question because I think that makes sense for autocomplete. We'll have uh, enable dynamic mapping. That's fine. And then for the data type here, we are actually going to select not string, but autocomplete. So here you can mess with some of the properties of the autocomplete. Uh, I'm not going to change any of them. This is fine for right now. And I'll just hit save. So that's what we've done. We've now added the question field with data types autocomplete. And this means now when I use this search index, I can use the autocomplete feature for the question field. OK, hopefully that's clear. Let's go back here to autocomplete and let's start writing this out. So for autocomplete, we need to do something a little bit more advanced than before. We're going to say result is equal to and then this is going to be question dot aggregate. And inside of here, we're going to pass our search. So we're going to do our operator 
and then search like that. For the search, again, we need to pass the index. So our index is going to be language search. And then at this time, rather than text, we're going to do autocomplete. Okay, so for our autocomplete, we need a query. So let's go with the query uh, and we're searching for questions. So we can do something like, what is the, I don't know, fastest? Uh, and maybe that will give us some autocomplete. Might have to change that if there's no results for that, but that's fine for now. Uh, next, we're going to have a path. And the path here is going to be the question. So that is the field that we added uh, in our kind of field mappings, right? So we need to use the same one here, which is question. Then we're going to have token order. So token order is essentially saying, are we going to be looking for something sequentially or do we not care about the order? I'll talk about that more in a second. And then lastly, I'm going to say fuzzy. And when we add in fuzzy here, it'll give us a fuzzy matching, not just the exact query, which is kind of what we're looking for here. All right. So let's just break this down a little bit here. So token order, as I was saying, sequential means that what we've placed right here, we're looking for exactly this where the different words or what we could call tokens appear adjacent to each other uh, in whatever the result is that we're going to be kind of matching with this. That might be a little bit confusing, but all that means is we're looking for what is the fastest kind of in this sequential order. If we had the other one, which is any, then that means that we're looking for any four of these words in any order in the result. So it could be like fastest is the what as opposed to what is the fastest. So use the appropriate one based on that. I also pull up the documentation here. I'll link this in the description with all the other options. So we have fuzzy enables fuzzy search, right? So that's what we're doing path. This is the indexed autocomplete type of field to search. So we're searching for question. We have our query. This is a string or multiple strings that we're going to search for. If we wanted to do multiple, we actually could just pass an array here of multiple uh, strings. For now, though, I'm just going to do one single string. OK, so let's do that for now. And just to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to add a projection operation here just so that we're only projecting the question uh, so that we don't have to search through so much text to see if this is working properly. So I'm just going to say underscore ID is zero. Uh, and then I need my answer or not answer. Sorry, this is going to be question. And this is going to be one. OK, so let's print this out. Let's say printer dot P print. And then the list of the result. Uh, I need to actually call this function. Otherwise, of course, it's not going to do anything. So let's run this again. OK, and let's scroll down and we actually didn't get any results. OK, so what is the fastest wasn't really giving me any results there. So let's do something that's going to be a bit better for autocomplete. Uh, let's just try actually computer programmer and see if that actually gives us anything at all with the fuzzy matching. OK, so let's have a look here uh, and we should see computer programmer. OK, so Gary Kasparov recently beat a computer program. OK, that's pretty close. Uh, computer programming language. OK, computer program. There you go. So we're getting all of the autocomplete results that contain something similar to computer programmer or exactly computer programmer. OK, so that is how you perform the autocomplete. Maybe this wasn't actually the best example using the Jeopardy data set because it's hard to really autocomplete, I guess, the questions. There's so many of them that are very similar to each other. Uh, but you get the point. That's how you do autocomplete. All right, so my apologies for the abrupt cut here, but at this point we have covered autocomplete, fuzzy matching, searching with synonyms, and I want to start showing you some more advanced stuff and how we actually kind of filter the result here. So we have this search stage, right, where we're actually going and we're searching for some specific text. But a lot of times I want to kind of fine tune this uh, and make it so that maybe we're filtering out specific results or we're prioritizing results that contain some extra uh, data in our queries. Right. So I'll show you how we do that. And I'm actually just going to paste this in and then I'll kind of walk you through the syntax and explain how this works. So this is something that I have here that is going to perform a more advanced search uh, using this compound operator or this compound field. Now, I'll bring up the documentation here so we can have a quick look. All of this will be linked in the description afterwards so you can look at it yourself. Uh, but we can see compound has the following syntax where we can pass an object here that contains must, must not, should, filter, etc. Now, these keywords here you want to use over something like a match statement in the aggregation pipeline. So rather than searching, 
getting all of the search results and then trying to match them to a specific query. Instead, you want to use this, the must, must not, should and filter. So as you can see here for must, this is kind of mapping to and and it means anything that we provide here must be true for a document to be included in the results must not. That's the opposite. And then for should, this is going to prioritize results that do have the should clause. Uh, so the should clause is true. Now, as you read here, it says if you use more than one should clause, uh, you can use the minimum should match option to specify a minimum number of should clauses that must match to include your document in the results. Uh, and if omitted, the default is zero, which is what we're going to have. We then have filter uh, and you can have a read at how that works. I'm not going to go through that in this video. OK, so let's go back here to VS Code and let's actually run compound queries uh, after quickly just having a look at all the stuff that we've put inside of here. So we have our search. We're looking at the index called language search and then we have our compound keyword. So for must here, we've provided an array of must clauses. Uh, in this case, we've just done one, which is text. And this is saying that we want to have computer or coding inside of category. So that must be true for us to return this. Continuing, we have must not. And this is saying we don't want to have codes inside of the category uh, path. So if we have codes, we cannot return that. And this is in case sensitive, by the way. Uh, so if this was like a capital codes, same thing. It's not going to make a difference here in this result. Continuing, we have should. So for should, we want application to be a part of the answer. So anything that has application as a part of the answer, we're going to prioritize returning that. And then we're performing a projection here uh, where we're getting the question, answer and category. And we have a score, which is a field that we're adding to each result, uh, which contains the metadata of the search score for this kind of search operation. So let's just run this and see what our result looks like. And notice here that this is what we're getting. So the answer application. That's the first answer that we're getting. It has the highest score of 10. We then have the question here. Uh, the app in killer app stands for this. The category is computers. OK, continuing, uh, we see all of our scores down here. We have category computers. The answer is not application. It wasn't prioritized, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you guys get the point. I'm not going to go through all of this. And you're getting results uh, in terms of their relevancy, right? Ranked based on that score. Nice. OK, so that is the first operation right here. Again, to learn more about this stuff, please reference the documentation. It is very time consuming to try to explain every single field here in this video. Actually, I'll leave that there. Uh, now, though, I want to show you something called relevant search. Now, what we just did is kind of a relevant search, uh, but this one is more fine tuned and allows you to kind of boost uh, answers and change the score of specific results uh, based on some specific queries. So let's paste this one in here. It's called relevance. I just need to change this to be search. And what this does uh, is prioritize questions appearing in the later rounds, as the comment states. So we have our aggregation. We're doing search. We have our index and we have compound again. Now, this time we're looking for anything that contains geography in the category. And now we have multiple should clauses. So the first one here, we're looking for final jeopardy as the query in the path round. All of our uh, documents here have a round and we're saying if it appears in final jeopardy, we want to boost the score by a value of three. Now, what boost does is it actually multiplies the score by three. Uh, so that's what we're doing, just multiplying it by three if it appears in the final round. And then we have another text query here for double jeopardy. So if this appears in one of the later rounds, I believe double jeopardy is uh, I think the second last round in jeopardy, then we're going to boost the value by 2.0. Now, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I can do here. Rather than multiplying, I could add a constant value. I could use a custom function. I could implement something like Gaussian decay. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I might not be. So please excuse me if that's the case. Uh, and I can really customize kind of how I'm getting results ranked by relevance in the way that I define. For now, though, let's just call this function. And let's see what the result is. So let's run this and let's bring our terminal up here. And if I scroll down, uh, actually, let's just clear and rerun it just so I get all the results here in the terminal. OK, nice. So now that I'm here, I've just limited this to 10, by the way. So I'm only getting 10 results. You can see I have my category geography. I have my question. It's the only country whose name begins with an A but doesn't end with an A. OK, and this round final jeopardy. That's why it's appearing first. We have a score of 7.7, .7, which means the score would have been lower, but we multiplied it by three, right? Continuing, we have another one in final jeopardy, and I think all of these are appearing in final jeopardy. Now, if I make the limit like 100, let's rerun this. 
and let's see if we get some ones that are appearing in double jeopardy. Yes, you can see now we have double jeopardy and we're only multiplying those results by two. Uh, so they're going to have less of a score than the ones that appear in final jeopardy. Uh, and those ones all seem to have kind of like a seven plus score. All right. So there you go. That is the relevance search uh, again. As I keep saying, there's a lot more advanced stuff you can do. I can't cover it all in this video. It's really meant to be kind of an introduction to these topics and encourage you to go read the documentation. I will bring up the documentation for this, which is customizing the score in your results. Uh, again, all of this will be in the description and you can see we have options like boost, constant and function. So the boost is going to multiply a results score. Uh, we can actually use a value from the document for the multiplication factor, or we can just hard code our own value like two or three, which is what we did. Uh, we then have uh, what else was here? Uh, the constant. This is going to add a constant amount and then we have function. And if I scroll down here, I think there's some examples. Yeah. So the constant option replaces the base score with a specified number. So my apologies. Actually, we're not adding. We're just replacing it with a value. Uh, continuing, we have function. The function option allows you to alter the final score of the document using a numeric field. You can specify the numeric field for computing the final score through an expression. Uh, if the final result of the function score is less than zero, Atlas search replaces it with zero. Okay. And you can use stuff like a Gaussian decay, uh, and it kind of shows you how you would do that here. I'm not really going to go through much more of that. Okay. So I think with that said, that is going to wrap up this video. I do apologize that this wasn't extremely in depth, uh, but I can't really go through much more than I covered in this video because it gets very granular. There's all kinds of options. And at that point, I'm just really reading the documentation to you uh, and covering, you know, all the different options and kind of specific stuff that you use. Really, the core thing I wanted to show you here was this search operator, how you create that search index uh, and how you can perform full text search in MongoDB, because this is something I've actually never seen before and that was really cool. And then I wanted to kind of mention to you in this video. So with that said, I think I will wrap it up here. Another massive thank you to MongoDB for sponsoring this video and this series. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned a bit about MongoDB and Python. If you did leave a like subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another one.